What is up guys? I welcome you back to class number five. Uh, today what we're going to be covering is the timeline, um, dragging in sorting in record box, uh, what the grid is and how to use it, and uh, loops and grids, the two kinds of functions that you're going to be starting off with. So we're actually going to be pulling in our music today. So first you can see I've changed the background to Camelot. Um, I will link this one as said before, but this is a really good way when you're just learning record box to kind of memorize it or if you need to check with a key, this is a great way to do it. Um, so I just set my background as this is going to remain this the rest of the class. Uh, but without further ado, let's get into record box. So first thing, pull open record box. So we're going to pull it open and we're, we have a, our collection here. So when you're dragging in a song, I'm, I'm going to close it down just to show you because I've already pulled a song in to test it to make sure everything's going to be exactly the same and everything's going to be fluent. So as your record box is opening, um, we're only going to really need record box. So you already have your music imported based on guide four. So we're going to assume you have everything at the step we're at now. So we'll grab a track. Uh, really anyone will do We'll do this one because I know it's I know it's a free track and it's a local artist in Minneapolis, great dude, uh, makes some killer tunes. So we're gonna start off with dubstep today, essentially. Um, so and all these are gonna be linked in the SoundCloud. So if you have any, where did you get this? How do I get this? They're all gonna be there for you. So starting off the song, we have a couple things. So we have our cue in our loop here, and we have our grid. When you're just starting a song, you're going to want to switch tabs from here to this cue loop to this grid right here. So you're going to be in this mode. So what this tells you is this essentially is where your bar is and where your grid's going to be aligned. Um, I'll teach you about that in a second. This is your BPM. So for example, let's pull in this song called uh, Blast Like. So you see how the computer analyzed at 149.98. Uh, when it's this close, you can assume, um, there's a few rare instances, but for the most part, you can assume it's gonna be 150. So you can change it just like that. Otherwise, there are these new things added in record box six, which allow you to shift the whole beaker left and right. So let's say we zoom out here a little bit using these zooms. So there's a plus and a minus, so you zoom out, and we can see the first bar of the grid here. So it's from the 1.1 to this red right here. So what we're gonna be doing is, originally it was 149.98, we changed it to 150. So it's at 150 now. So we'll go back. And what this button does here is it will shift the whole beat grid right. So as you're hitting this, it's shifting the grid. So this is gonna be one of our friends. Whereas this one right here, expand and shrink beat intervals, we're not going to use. So this is a new feature added in record box six that wasn't previously in five, or it was in five, but it was just a pain. Um, what this does is essentially watch the 150 here. It's gonna spread out your BPM to where you actually wanna know your BPM with what you're working with. So we're not gonna use these two, we're gonna focus on these two, so don't get confused. And then this uh, this right here, essentially, what they do is they double or half the BPM. So essentially, what you could do is, say you wanted to have it to 75. You could do that, and it would do the same thing as hitting the double or the half. I normally just like to hit the 150, but for tunes such as drum and bass or other music, for example, like this 87 right here, Drum and bass, the way record box will analyze. So 87 is a pretty common um, identifier as a drum and bass track because you double it and it's 174. And that's exactly spot on with how it looks in the song. So some of the tracks aren't going to come in perfectly. So you just want to know the genre of music you're playing. So for example, we'll load in this one. What you can do is you can either click it and drag into the export. So it's gonna be in the export mode up here. You're gonna make sure, you wanna make sure you're still in that mode. One player, um, I always do one player. And right here, 
you're gonna see that the grid is not aligned and it's just kind of waveforms all over the place. So I'm gonna take you through this track. This is gonna be Mad Bliss Plony, Pony uh, Blissy Flip. Uh, this one is gonna be on the SoundCloud for a free download. So to start off with the song, I noticed that it's 127.99. So we're gonna take it up to 128. So this essentially corrects for the computer error, the computer analyzation, because sometimes during the start or the end, uh, there can be slowdowns which affect this. Uh, second thing, what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in. So if you have a mouse, like I do, what you're gonna do is you're gonna just zoom in, essentially like you're zooming in on a Mac or PC. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow you to see more or less of your grid, but when I'm doing gridding in my songs, I always make sure that mine is zoomed in all the way so I can get it as accurate as possible. So the button I was talking about before, this uh, this first beat of the bar to current position, what this is gonna do is this red bar right here is essentially your bar. So this to here is one bar, where these are one, two, three, four beats in between. So this is gonna be how your song structure is laid out. So whether it be 175 BPM or 125 BPM, from here, it's gonna be one, two, three, four, and then your next bar. The tempo just kind of determines the speed that these go between. So to start this song off, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be using this button here, which sets the first bar. So essentially how most songs work is the first kind of drop, um, the drop over here determines where I guess the the grid is gonna actually take place because there's some songs that have a one or two weird bar. But for this song, we're just gonna assume that it starts at the beginning uh, to get used to the tools. So we're gonna set the first beat of the bar to the current position right here. <clears throat> and we're gonna move it over. So do you see if you saw what I did there? I'm moving around, I'm clicking and dragging and then you hit this button right here, which sets the first beat. So this is where the grid's gonna start to align. So with it fully zoomed in, we can do a few things. We can either try to pinpoint it, so that looks about right, even though it's a little off. Um, for most people, that's gonna be on, but I'm very nitpicky on where my uh, grids are, just to make sure everything's lined up to a T. So, so we use this little uh, bar setter that kind of looks like a magnet. And the grid's basically on, but it's not quite there yet. So that's where we're gonna use these two, shift the whole beat grid left and the shift the whole beat grid right. So if we go down a little bit into the song, we can see that the grids are close, but they're, they're about one nudge too far away. So we're gonna go back to the original song, and if you see with this left button, it will bring the beat grid to the left, and this one will bring it to the right. So essentially what you're doing here is you're just lining it up with the start of the song, which is right here. And now this is what you call your grids are on point. So if you do nothing else, make sure your grids are on point. So now that we've talked about grids, we're gonna talk about a few other things which are, uh, which is gonna be your looping and your grids. So essentially, when you play the song, you just hit space on it. YouTube's probably detecting that right now as a uh, as copyrighted music, but it's it's all right for this tutorial um, since it's not a since it's just basically a free tutorial for everyone, so you can learn to DJ too. So we have our grid on point, which is gonna be the first step. The second step, which I highly recommend, is there's this tab to the left, which lets you determine how far you can jump with your arrow keys, which are gonna be key into speed gridding later on when you have more songs. Like my current library has almost 20,000 gridded songs. Um, and I can usually get them down to about 15 seconds a song if I wanted to, but for now we're gonna take it slow. So 
for example, you have four beats. And then what I want you to do is press the right key on your arrow pad and then the left key. So you can see how it will follow along with the grid to these beats. If you don't, uh, Recordbox comes enabled with Quantize, but if you don't have this on, I'll talk about it later, just make sure the little red cue is lit up. Um, and that what that will do is it'll just allow you to grab onto the closest point. So now that we know that, let's say we, wa we wanna get right on the bar, right on the grid. What you can do is you can hit the C command on your keyboard. So C is gonna jump it to the closest. So if we put it in the middle here, what C is gonna do, it's gonna jump it to the closest bar or the closest what we've distinguished. So which is gonna be, we're gonna be, wanna be on this one. So you can hit C a few times. It's essentially like hitting the Q button on DJ equipment if you're familiar with that. But that essentially will just allow you to get on grid. Now what I was talking about before with the four beats, moving it to eight beats is essentially two bars because there's four bars or there's four beats in a bar. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move it to eight bars because how song structure goes <coughs> is everything's in eight bar fragments for the most part. There are songs that are definitely not in that eight bar fragment, but for the majority of the time, you're gonna get away with finding the drop and you have eight bars to and after, and I'll show you with the master markers later. But all you need to know is I keep it on eight bars and that's how we set it up. So hitting C and then the arrow key, <coughs> excuse me, and then the arrow key over, what this does is it jumps eight bars. So we know that right here, right here, right here, right here, see how they're all kind of aligned with the grids are all on point with how we set it up from before. This is what the eight bar jumps is going to do. And this is going to help later when we're dealing with like a house song or a drum and bass song, which more so follows the algorithm of a natural layout. One last thing for part of this episode is you will see that there's a counter at the top of my screen that says 1.1 bars. So what this is telling you is it starts at one bar every time, so it's not going to go 0 0.1 bars. It's always going to start at one. And if this is not enabled, it's going to be in your settings. So you can go into view and then there is a point where it says current position bars, count to next memory queue, or count to the next memory queue in beats. So I always like to keep it on current position bars until I put in my marker points, which I'm gonna show you later. But for now, we're gonna keep it on current position bars. And then just make sure for your key display format, you have the alphanumeric, which we set up in the last class. And other than this, we're all caught up. Uh, everything that we talked about should be caught up. And if you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to comment below. Uh, there fresh installs and fresh features. They sometimes change how things are moved around. And just starting out, you might not know where it is or if it's possible. So comment section is a great place for that. But otherwise, I will see you guys in Recordbox Tutorial 6, where we're going to be talking more about the loops the markers, the hot cues, and all the nice save features that we have for live performances, which are actually going to get you into song structure and figuring out what songs are going to work with each other. So I'm excited to actually play some music for you guys and show you how that all works. I'll see you guys in the next episode.